Hi everybody and welcome to the Open Vehicle Sketchpad Tutorials. My name is Brandon Leatherland of the NASA Langley Research Center Aeronautic Systems Analysis Branch. Today we're going to go over the menu bar. We're going to get familiar with the menu bar and some of the features that are associated with the main operating window. As you can see we already have the workspace pulled up. We'll go ahead and get started with the file header in the menu bar. We can make a new file or we can go ahead and open one that already exists. Here we have my uh, Cirrus SR22 files. Uh, we've gone over how to add favorites. You just go to the path that you want to use and you just add that path to favorite and it'll put it down here in a list or you can go straight to the VSP path where the VSP application is actually located on your computer. Uh, what we'll do now is just go ahead and load up a low resolution version of the Cirrus SR22. As you can see it pulls up the wireframe fairly quickly. Uh, here we've got the three axis coordinate system and all the components associated with this model over here on the right. Some of the other features that we have available are save, save as, and save set. Now it's important to note that VSP does not have an autosave feature at this point. So it's very important to save often and save multiple models. Uh, so you always have something to fall back on. Additionally, save set allows you to take a certain number or selection of components and save them in a set of a uh, different VSP file. You can also insert VSP3 files into an existing VSP3 working model. You can import a uh, number of VSP files, including uh, old VSP2 files. You can convert those files to VSP3 now. And you can export under any number of file formats. Uh, Stereolith and tri files are particularly useful. Stereolith are nice for exporting to uh, 3D modeling software uh, in case you want to build something in a 3D printer. Uh, tri files are very useful for exporting to CFD solvers. And run script. Uh, just takes, uh, for example, existing VSP scripts and executes them inside the workspace. Under the edit heading, we now have a number of features that we didn't have available in older versions of VSP3. Primarily, pick mode and undo parameter change. Now, undo parameter change is very useful. Say you go in and accidentally change a value and you don't remember what that value was to begin with, but you made a change that was completely unintentional. All you have to do is go back and undo parameter change and it reverts it back to the way it was before you made any changes. This is very helpful when you go in and start using sliders and you accidentally click where you're not supposed to. Another feature that we have is to turn pick mode on and off with P. And you can see you hover the mouse over any component and it highlights that component. If you click on it, it pulls up the component window where you can adjust the parameters and it also selects it over in the geometry browser and shows, where, shows you where it exists in the hierarchy of components. And you can do that for any of them. And again, you toggle that with P and it turns it back off. Another that we have is cut, copy, paste, delete, and select all. These simply operate exactly the same as these buttons over in the geometry window. We can select all and cut, copy, paste, and delete anywhere inside the component hierarchy. And each shortcut associated with these are listed here on the right hand side. Under the window heading, we're allowed to split up the workspace into four or two different working areas. You can see the active working area with this red box surrounding it. Now you can change the view, the zoom, and the pan independently in each one. And incidentally, you can also change the background image and the background color independently on both of these images. So for right now, we'll just jump back to one to show you what I mean. If we go into the background window, you can adjust the color. Now by default, this is about a 5% gray to make it a little bit easier on your eyes. If you're going to export to a document, for example, you want to take that all the way up to one, and then you can get a screenshot, which will capture an image, and it'll have that nice white background that makes it integrate nicely with any kind of... Uh, text-based document on a white paper. We can go ahead and restore those defaults for now. But you can, in fact, change that to any color that you like of any brightness or darkness. And you can load in a background image. So for example, if you have a three view of an aircraft, you can absolutely load that three view in and use that to get a working model location-wise of all the different components that you need inside. And when you're done with it, 
you simply just go into background, restore the defaults, and it gets rid of it. The view heading has a number of standard views available by pressing F5 through F12. So for example, if we wanted a left isometric view, it takes the current center of rotation at the nose and aligns the camera angle so that you have an isometric view. This is helpful for repeating views for documentation, publication. It makes everything look very similar, very organized, and very professional. Additionally, we can center the model. So if we move the model off and press C, it brings the current center of rotation, which is the nose here, back to the center of the workspace. And you can do that wherever the current center of rotation is. Incidentally, if we press R, you can set the center of rotation to be any point that you define. So if we set the rotation center and say we want to look at the wingtip very closely, you can zoom in and out and rotate about the wingtip without worrying about the rest of the model getting in the way. And again, if you move off screen and rotate it about, hitting C will bring that back to the center. Another feature that we have available is fit on screen using F. That takes all visible components and makes it so that in any orientation there's a, there's a boundary around it in the workspace. So if we go in and say we only want this fairing component visible and we fit that to screen, now the fairing is the only thing that you can see and it blows it up to fill the entire workspace. So if you have say a spark plug in an engine you can fit that component to screen when it's the only piece available and then show the rest of the engine or the rest of the plane and fit that to screen as well. So we select all, show everything, fit, and now we're back. Incidentally, you can actually create a custom view. So if I want to have kind of this aggressive fly-in as one of my views, you hold Shift F1, F2, F3, or F4, and it will save that view. So I can move this off, zoom out. If I press F1, it brings it right back to it. Another feature that we have available is to adjust the view. Now this allows you to adjust the size of the viewport, adjust the center of rotation to be any point in three-dimensional space. You can also pan the camera, zoom the camera, and rotate the camera about the three axes. Now this is really helpful. Say for example, you want your image background in the top view of the Cirrus here that you can start basing some of your model parameters on. If we go to top view, you can see that it's a little difficult to get this just right so that you can start basing your other dimensions, say sweep or root chord based on this 3D model. If we go back into adjust and say, we want this to be just so. You can see that the dimensions line up very nicely from the nose to the tail, the horizontal stabilizer, wingtip to wingtip, and sweep. And this is very useful for doing a, a rough cut when you're modeling an entire airplane. You use the three view drawings. You can do this with the front view to get the dihedral. You can do this with the left view to make sure you get the wing placement and the shape of the fuselage correct. And uh, that's a lot of what it's used for. It's also used for recreating very precisely images for publication. That covers it for the menu heading. The model and analysis headings will be covered in much greater detail uh, in later videos and on uh, advanced concepts. The third video in the series is going to cover the clipboard and the hierarchy of components and how to adjust that as well as changing the surface visualization of components and how to define sets. So thank you again. We'll see you next time.